بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome all viewers and listeners to yet another episode of a TBN podcast which is a project dedicated to helping examine with knowledge contemporary affairs happening in the Muslim communities Likewise, we tackle topics such as studying in Saudi Arabia benefiting from some of the most prominent Islamic scholars of today and how to apply to different universities juggling marital life and studies self-improvement, education, books, and everything else We have a new ep- a weekly episode every Monday at 9 p.m. KSA time, 6 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to send us your questions, topics, and concerns, as you guys have already been doing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hayakallah, ikhwah. We have a, a guest this week, our brother Muhammad Abdul Razak, hafidhahullah <laughs> ta'ala. <laughs> he's, well, he's, he's actually not a guest. He's been here in Riyadh for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. But, you know, I think now you're adjusted, right? Alhamdulillah. So how you liking Riyadh compared to Medina? <laughs> as far as far as getting around, how, what do you think? It's much more difficult than Medina. Uh, Medina is small. Mm. Riyadh is very big, so getting around without a car. Obviously, I don't have a car. Uh-huh. It's very difficult. How, how does it come as, as far as like your planning? Because we've been trying to tell the viewers like that when you're living in Riyadh, you have to plan like far ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It can easily take you 45 minutes, 30 minutes to get to a lesson. How are you? seeing like that adjustment from Medina where it might take you five minutes yeah, 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 to hear yeah, yeah. yeah I think the first couple of weeks it hit me because I was late for every lesson mm. I almost li- want, what, what did I, I went to Sheikh Fahad mm. on a Thursday and Rajahi I came there I missed everything I had to Salah I missed everything <laughs> stuck in traffic I was yeah, like yeah, 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 welcome yeah. to Riyadh Allah understands you gotta so pick your battles I've noticed I don't know if, if for you guys you guys got cars I've noticed if there's any lesson after Maghrib if I don't leave an hour maybe more uh. before Maghrib I'm not making it well I, at one point yeah. I used to um, think of actually praying Asr at Sheikh Fawzan's masjid yeah. and, and then just saying between Asr and Maghrib making use of your time yeah. reading something Instead as opposed to being stuck in traffic, traffic between yeah. Asr and to Maghrib. be honest that was that's the best idea because yeah. remember we used to work at Minarat right? yeah, yeah. what I used to do is after that my family wasn't here at the time I go straight to sh- the Sheikh's yeah. take a small nap right before Asr in my car yeah then after that, I'm there for the lesson. Yeah, sure. I don't leave until Aisha. Yeah. Sure. That w- for me, that worked perfectly because yeah. you beat that traffic. Yeah, yeah. After yeah, you, Asr, you managed to sit between Asr and Maghrib and, and uh, read so, something. So I've noticed the traffic starts from Asr hmm. to Aisha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, Pretty much. That's, yeah. 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 So you don't want to I, I don't go to lessons after Maghrib. Subhanallah. Hardly. There, there's not many anyway. Yeah, Shafa yeah. has stopped, yeah. but most of the lessons are saying me Shuayir is after Aisha anyway. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it helps out. Alhamdulillah. Jamil, Jamil, so you're enjoying Riyadh so far, huh? Yeah. And you're adjusting to the traffic, you're adjusting to the life here. Alhamdulillah. Nice Suppose let's in, we need to introduce life. the brother to the audience, maybe they mm. don't know him. Yeah, yeah. Yalla. Uh, brother, master student, Jamil Islamia, from Birmingham, mashallah. Oh, very. Oh, very. <laughs> from the same city. I guess we can all share in that. We're all masters, huh? <laughs> yeah, all masters. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is the master's podcast today. Well, yeah, yeah, so yeah, Allah for Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So tell us about this master's program. Tell us, like, what is, um, as far as studying there in hadith, right? Is there particular, like, colleges or faculties? So we have in um, in, uh, in in Medina. So it's we're in three different, different universities, yeah? Yeah, three mm. different Medina. Uh, three different uh, faculties as well. Three different faculties as well, mashallah. Yes, sir. So no. you're in Aqidah, we have yeah. Aqidah. Yeah. Um, you're in Tafsir, we have Tafsir as well. No. So um, I don't know how it's for you guys, but we have five five uh, kulliyat. Mm. We have uh, kulliyat al-hadith, mm. sharia, da'wah, Quran, and lugha. Mm. And each uh, kulliyat has uh, in master's program m- more than one tabi' lahu. Mm. So for example, in I'm in hadith, it's one faculty. But when you go to masters, there's two programs you can join for masters. Masarat, mm-hmm. they call it. Masarat, yeah. 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 Um, they call it um, um, like least, majors, if, if you like. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm in ulum al hadith, mm-hmm. and the other one in kulliyat al hadith called fiqh al sunnah, mm-hmm. and they differ in in, in, in in the things that you study on. So ilm yeah. al hadith is focused on mustalah al hadith, ilm al rijal, jarh al tadil, tahrij, that type of stuff. Whereas okay. fiqh al sunnah is more focused on and the nahia of the fiqh of the ahadith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you study on, uh, you have to revise a lot more muharr for your entry exam and stuff like that. No. Um, so that's for kulliyat al hadith. Yeah. No. I think one is uh, riwaya, one is diraya. Basically, one in on short, riwaya. if you like, in short, that's what it is. But you have. Just for those like that don't know the audience, yeah. like when it comes to knowing a hadith, there's two things you need to know about the hadith the riwaya, the narration side of things, which is everything you've mentioned, al rijal, these sort of things. 
And then the diraya, which is actually the meaning of the hadith. So yeah. it's two different aspects. Well, now, different are the programs, are they both the same? Like, I know right now you're in Tekmili, right? Yeah. So Tekmili, for the audience, I don't know how you translate it, but generally it's mm. a two-year program, mm. right? So um, back in the day, how it used to be was um, the master's programs were four years. Mm. And I think that's what you guys are still on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, you are. Yeah, we yeah. call it Risala. Yeah, so Risala. We still have those, like in Aqidah, mm. still Risala. I think in Sharia, it's still Risala. But our our kulliya, hadith, and some of the other aqsam, they changed it to a new tariqa, which is a new way, which is called um, bahth takmili. Mm-hmm. So it's not a four-year program anymore. It's mm-hmm. cut down to two years and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so in the other program, the old program, you would be studying for one year in class, mm-hmm. doing buhuth and, and essays and whatnot, coursework, mm-hmm. for one year. Now they've made it two years coursework. Mm-hmm. Two years studying to in no, my this program. Is Takmili. 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 Okay. Two years now we're studying in class. Okay. Um so we've got teachers we have to attend, we have to do coursework for each one and the likes. And the main reason why they changed it is um they've noticed that the students going from the degree to the masters is a big jump. Mm. Mm. So they noticed there was a um no ta'af, there was some Weakness, if you like, yeah. from going from the black bachelor's program to the master's program, and and there is a big meaning gap. jumping into the risala, jumping straight so into the risala. So techmili will yeah. be exactly. more easier for the students. Techmili is easier. Why? Because mm. in the old one, you are only doing one year. Well, sorry, w- yeah, one year. Um, the menhajia. Menhajia. What you're studying. Practicing. You're menhajia only practicing is when you're studying year. the coursework. The coursework yeah. and how to write. The main thing is you get used to writing a lot of coursework. Mm. So let's say I had in my first semester, I had six subjects. Each teacher is asking for you to do a coursework every week. Yeah. I don't take us back to those days. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so jumping straight from bachelor's to master's, as you guys know, is a big jump. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So if you're doing that for only one year, they notice that it's not enough time to, to, to prepare them to work on a big risala, yeah. four or yeah. 500 pages mm-hmm. and the likes and tahqiq of big mm-hmm. books. Because before they would do like tahqiq, fatah al-bari or tahdib al so, so I, I think it's kind of like you have the bachelor's, you have the PhD. Yeah. Right? Before, masters, there was literally no difference between masters and PhD. It was exactly. kind of like the same. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But now they just made masters be like intermediate period. Between Basically. Where, and where you practice, where you get used. So yeah. instead of having one year to get used to coursework, you've got two years now. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, 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 that's, and, th- and then you don't even do a risala where it's four, five hundred, eight hundred pages. It's bahta It can be done. Are you, are you expected to finish it in that one semester? Because you said it's two and no. a half years, right? Yeah, yeah. So they still give you um, up to four years, I think. up to seven semesters. So three and a half. Mm-hmm. That's so like three and a half. That's like the Edna or the the most. But I think before, back in the day, it was minimum six semesters mm. you have to complete, and then the max was ten semesters. So that yeah. was five years. Yeah, yeah. Five years. Yeah. That was for the, the resala. For the resala. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So they had up to five years to complete it. Yeah. Mm. We've only got three and a half to four max no. like is it cut down a year or a year and a half because yeah, two years you're studying two years and then a year after year and a half after that you're expected to be completed completely completed yeah. Yeah. when can you start putting taqdeem or submitting applications you, for your as research? soon as you finish your first year as soon as you finish your first year yeah. so mm. I started mm-hmm. straight away uh, and it does take time as you guys know <laughs> <laughs> and they give you an academic advisor and then you can put the yeah, work in yeah. And everything, yeah. Jimmy so do you I'm have done. a topic already or I have a topic <laughs> it's um you want to Inish- share that online? Initially, uh, not as yet. long as we accept it. You know, th- for those that don't know, <laughs> at, at the university when you're in master's program, <laughs> the one rule the idea is that you have don't turn over it. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> is that more it's like a like a ida for us, or more like like is it a norm for us, a culture, no, uh, or no. is it more like I think it's to both. Save I think it's both, right? I think it's both. No, yeah. to save yourself, I think sometimes someone My has a good idea, it. tells someone else. Maybe that person might not steal it, but, but someone else would hit off him before you know it's been registered before you. I think that's more like if it's a fikra though, right? Yeah, like if, it's more, if it's more of like a general thought, right? You haven't put it down on paper. Well, you, you never know. It might turn into a fikra. You don't want to give no, away the, the opportunity. Thing, you, you, you know how long it takes for it to of get course, accepted. Of course, of yeah. course. So by the time you're doing it, imagine someone else hears of it in another country mm. and he gets you. it done before you. Uh, I didn't even think about the other country. Yeah. 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 Thing, it has to be the whole world. No one's ever written on that. Khalas, tell us... Uh, Generally uh, about what your topic is. Or it's accepted, it's, no? Uh, n- it's in the process, basically. It's okay. initially being accepted. Okay. Um, I don't want to mention and then. So, it's uh, it's a tahqiq of a juz hadithi. So, mm-hmm. we have the famous books of hadith, the Dawaween, uh, Islam, 
تقاري مسلم one second explain what a tahqiq is for so tahqiq is the process of changing a book from manuscript form mm-hmm. which is the old um, written uh, handwritten, handwritten um, scrolls and the mm-hmm. likes mm-hmm. so um, the one I'm doing is uh, written by an author who died in the year 365 after the hijrah mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. died in the year 365 after the Hijrah. He gathered a hadith. So we have Bukhari, Muslim, these famous books of hadith. Then we have smaller books of hadith that a narrator would write down for himself. Mm-hmm. On a specific topic. Sometimes a specific topic. Sometimes it's random. Whatever he, mm-hmm. he went to um, Basra and he met such and such a sheikh, whatever he wrote down. Then he went yeah. to Egypt, then he went here. Whatever a hadith that he took, he selected some of those hadith and he put them into this book. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what I'm doing. That's called Ajza Hadithiyah. Montas. They're smaller. They're smaller. Um, and some of these hadith, they might be in Bukhari, mm-hmm. Muslim already. Mm-hmm. That's why they um, stipulate upon us that the number of hadith that we have in a Juz Hadithi that we choose can't be ab- above a certain amount. Mm. So um, if I remember properly, uh, you're only allowed to have like 20%. From the Risala of the Ahadith, let's say I have a hundred Ahadith, mm-hmm. only 20 Ahadith are allowed to be in Bukhari Muslim. Mm. The rest have to be outside of Bukhari Muslim because we all know that Bukhari and Muslim is um, accepted straight away with the Muslims. It's mm. authentic. So there's no work really being done there. Yeah, no takhreej. There's no really takhreej. Mm. You're, not, you're not really searching and doing um, bath like that. Do, mm. As far as the manus- manuscripts, do they expect you to give them yourselves or the university provides them? No, or no, no. You have to do everything you from have scratch to do everything yourself. yourself. So the process is you have to go search yourself first for an idea. Once you find that idea, you have to log into these um, university um, search bars, if you like, and search tools and engines that are private in universities. You don't find it outside, like Darul Manvum and the likes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you have to literally search for every university in the world that this model hasn't been taken mm. in Sudan or, or anything similar to it. And if it is similar, and um, there's some differences between your work, what you're going to do, and the previous work. You have to mention the differences. And mm. in terms of tahqiq, manuscript, you have to go look for it yourself. Mm. Alhamdulillah, the one that we did, or, or we are going to do, is me and another brother. Mm. We took half half. Inshallah, if he does, he's completely accepted. My one is still in the process because um, I took a break. Um, it was already. Um, it, it was already done But the previous person who done it He did tahqiq on it uh, I don't know what the word for it in English is tahqiq That, that process of changing of it, it maybe. Yeah. Analyzation That process of changing it from This old scroll mm. This old written um, yeah, manuscript. manuscript Into a published book The book that we yeah. have mm-hmm. yeah. Like this mm-hmm. For the reader Yeah. So this is a published book from the book publishing. The origin of it might be his exercise book, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So you have to go um, change it from th- um, manuscript to a book form. It's already done before. No, okay, so... But the difference is, uh-huh. um, the guy that did it before us, like thir- 20, 30 years ago, he did it on a nuskha, on a copy that was naqis, that was... Uh. Incomplete. Incomplete. Uh. So out of the hadith, the one that we got, it came out later after he already published his book. It came out later and it has 180 ahadith. Mm-hmm. Whereas the one that he did only had uh, 35 ahadith. Wow. Or 50. So that's a lot. Or 50. He didn't really, he didn't so really a do lot. it then. There's yeah, a lot. yeah, that's a lot. He, really his copy it. never had the rest. Yeah, that's not even a third. Of what you're so doing. so <laughs> yeah. straight away the university said, yeah, of course you can do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're allowed to do the whole thing again and we split it in half, 1990. Mm-hmm. Now with the manuscripts, obviously, you know, for the viewers or listeners, it's very hard to read. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, the the writing is very old. Do the yeah. university in yeah. Ulum al-Hadith and Majesty, yeah. do they teach you guys to go yeah. through this? I sent, yeah. Um, so alhamdulillah, there was a lot of things that we learned in, in, in Majesty mm. for those t- two-year studying period. And from the most important things that we learned was تحقيق um, المخطوطات um, How to do, uh, read manuscripts and to change them And I remember the teacher Zal Khair, Sheikh Badr Al-Amash um, he's, a, he's from the Kibar in Kuliyat Al-Hadith From the um, senior teachers he, he taught us the previous semester uh-huh. First semester And the second semester we got him again But uh-huh. for this topic For how to change the manuscripts Al-Akhri uh-huh. 
the first week before we even started class, he sent us a telegram um, image of a makhtuta. Makhtuta is the actual manuscript. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, for the first class, I want you all to transcribe this page. Yeah, just figure out what he's saying. Just figure out what he's saying. Wow. And we're like, we haven't even started class yet. <laughs> <laughs> Straight yeah. in. And that's yeah. how masters is. So, wallahi, I kid you not, I only did two or three lines. Wow. It was a full page. Wow. I only I could only read two or three lines. And majority of the brothers were the same. Mm. So his thing was he he thought we already knew this stuff and he just went straight in the yeah, first yeah, lesson, yeah, yeah. second lesson. And we just said, whoa, 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 Sheikh, hold up. Yeah. We've never done this before, Sheikh. Yeah. And we can't even read this 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 writing. Yeah, yeah. There's like, a lot of professors that are like that. Yeah. But Alhamdulillah, I I I, I, I was with the one that spoke up for our class. And I told him, Sheikh, can we do the theory first? Yeah, yeah. Like, can we go back to basics and then build it up? He goes, oh, I thought you guys already knew this. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, I'll do it with examples. I was like, Sheikh, no, nah, we want theory first. Yeah, yeah. Break it down and then we work our way up. But that's good that he was willing to even yeah, start from w- the yeah, beginning. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Some professors. We had a relationship with yeah. him from the last semester. So yeah, it was, it was okay. okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, some of the professors, Kalas, once they see, like, the chair magister. Khalas, they expect they you to care. be at a yeah, certain yeah, level. Yeah. They want you yeah. to catch up. You should have did it already. Yeah, Go yeah. figure it out on your own time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but subhanAllah, it's, uh, if you look at this, it's quite uh, very interesting and very important that following generations are actually teaching this mm. because they find new manuscripts all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's not people, inshallah, like you out there, yes, who are able to read these manuscripts, then that knowledge would have gone lost. Of course. It would be lost. 100%. Alhamdulillah, it's really, a, really a, a form of preserving. It is you know, the Islamic heritage and our, and our texts, yeah. mashallah. That, that subject was an eye-opener, Akhi. Yeah. He went from teaching us, um, we literally throughout the weeks, you could see the difference. Because we went from not being able to read two, three lines to we were doing 10 pages. Mm-hmm. Each person was doing 10 pages. Mm-hmm. Mashallah. And, um, and we were doing different handwritings. This is a it's basically, handwriting. I, I suppose it's, um, it's kind of like similar to learning a completely new alphabet. Because you was, know the alif ba ta was, it was written it was now. Another, it literally was like another alam, like as if he put glasses on for us. I was like, I was never, int- I never even knew this world existed. Subhanallah. Yeah. Like, and one of the 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 nice benefits that I got from there was, um, even in terms of like libraries, mm-hmm. how many um, libraries that have makhtutat around the world. So he was telling us um, some of them, and he mentioned that the um, the the head of um, the libraries for makhtutat, is turkey mm. istanbul specifically and he mentioned the reason why it's quite obvious the last uh, uh, caliphate was in um the ottoman empire, yeah, ottoman yeah. empire. and that lasted for many years yeah, yeah. Yeah. so obviously all the beautiful and they the main it they, they collected it and they preserved it there and it yeah. stayed preserved. Now, how do, now how do you watch out for the ones that are not actual manuscripts fakes so fraudulent so, okay so yeah, yeah. We, we we learned um the history of it, we learned there's there's it's a science by itself. You know how we have fiqh, we have ilm al hadith, we have aqidah. Manuscripts is a fen, it's a science in itself mm-hmm. that yeah. books have been written on. Um, mm. And so we, we, we had to study those books, mm. we had to um, listen to lectures online. Um, like, for example, you know the famous muhaqqiq, um, what's his name? Uh, I think he did Sierra Alam Rubala, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Did Tahdib Kamal definitely. Bashar Awad. Mm. Yeah. Bashar Awad. He's done volumes and volumes of books. He was just here for the book fair, right? That, that was no, the same no. Sheikh? Oh, no. That was uh, Mashur Hassan. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Even him, he's a big muhaqqiq. Yeah, yeah. So um, he, uh, Bashar has a book on that. Um, there's other ones. So he told us to read the books, listen to the lectures. We did examples in a class. We did a lot of things. We learned about different libraries, um, not just Turkey. There's mm. Turkish the most, Egypt, mm-hmm. um, different lands in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Tehran. How many we can't even reach right now in Iran mm. because it's, it's um, there's the Rafida in control over there. Let alone the makhtutat, the hundreds and thousands of makhtutat manuscripts that are nafisa that are in the lands of the non-Muslims. The, yeah, that they stole. Oh, subhanallah. <laughs> subhanallah. Some of them, Sheikh Mashhur is actually doing a bahf on that. How did they end up there? Yeah. And mm. some of them were stolen. Some of them were bought by businessmen, and some of them w- were between good relations between the countries like Germany. They never really stole anything. He mentioned. Mm-hmm. What I found was we had to do a um, one of the courseworks was everyone had to write about a library, its history, um, the books that it has, and stuff like that. I chose to do 
um, Chester Beatty mm. in Dublin. Mm. And I first came across this, not in the course, I came across it a long time ago, when I bought a book, Kitab al-Iman, Sheikh Islam in Taymiyyah. And he mentioned in there, Dublin, in Arabic. And yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dublin? What is this? <laughs> then he says, Maktabat Chester Beatty. Yeah, yeah. And I searched up and I'm like, what? In Dublin, Sheikh Islam in Taymiyyah's Makhtouta, that he writ or his students writ or someone else after him, is in Dublin, Ireland. I was like, what? So um, I did my coursework that week on Dublin and I read um, the history about it and the likes, mm. um, the catalogue. And, I, and, I've, and I've been going through the catalogue in my own time. I, I went crazy about manuscripts in that, mm. in that time. In that. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I found, subhanAllah, most of the manuscripts in that place already have been um, put into published form. Mm. But you'll be surprised to see how many of the books that we read today, that we have around us today, there's asal in it in those maktab- ma- maktabat. Yeah, yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm sorry to have to interrupt this podcast. However, I must inform you guys that there was about 30 to 40 minutes of our podcast that got left out because of the audio uh, cutting right there at the 25 minute mark. Um, and about time that I noticed that the audio was not recording anymore on our microphones, it was about half an hour after. So we decided to just get rid of that entire audio because the audio was not of good quality. It wasn't, uh, it would probably be something that hurts your ears and something that you wouldn't want to listen to. So we decided to take it out. Um, we will try to put in the description below um, a link to the full audio for those people who, who wish to hurt their ears. Um, but however, we decided not to put that in the um, podcast. With that being said, the things that were talked about that were missed out, they were majority qu- majority of them were questions that were sent to us last week uh either in the live chat or on the comments from the last podcast so anyone who may have sent questions you might find it in that audio um, we'll try to address it moving forward but who knows time is of the essence and we may not be able to do it um so as you see here in this podcast as we continue then we're continuing on the final question that was sent to us and that was regarding what's was so again uh my apologies i'm very sorry that was a mistake that was on my behalf and inshallah we'll try to do something to the audio to make it clear but it's going to be very difficult um so again uh excuse us for this mistake and inshallah ta'ala i'll let you guys get back to the podcast wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so there's for example when it comes to the prayer the salah mm. some people they try to pray salah and they can't they can't complete the salah because they don't know how many rak'ahs they, pray, they mm. prayed. So by the time they get to the end, they're like, did I pray three? Did I pray four? They add another rak'ah. Mm. Then they doubt. And, and it just continues, cycle, never-ending cycle. So such a person, if he realizes that this is a disease, mm. this is a marad, mm. okay? Just like, for example, someone who can't pray salah standing, mm. someone who can't pray salah sitting, yes? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hold him accountable for not fulfilling that pillar. No, he won't. Same thing when it comes to you. Naam, having khushu' in your salah and knowing what you're reading and where you got up to and how many rak'ahs you've got, it's a wajib. There's no doubt. But if because of this disease of waswas, you can't fulfill that wajib, then like the, prophet, the, the scholars they mention and the hadith they mention, you built on the yaqeen. Mm. If you know for sure that you've prayed three rak'ahs, then just add one more and say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Don't continue beyond that. And I mean... There's so much more to it, but mm. uh, the first step is realize it's a marad, it's a disease, and mm. Allah will not punish you for a shortcoming in your ibadah or even in your tahara mm. that is due to a disease. Jameen. So that's the first realization you have to have. Now, Meaning have acknowledging this was was. Acknowledging, acknowledging the fact that this disease. is a disease from the shaitan no. trying to trick you, trying yes. to keep you busy with things that yeah, I need it's not there, us no. No. And you start overthinking it. Next no. thing you know, you're repeating salawat, yeah. you're repeating different acts of ibadat, so you're just having shaq in everything. Yeah, so you have to acknowledge. Uh, yeah. I have was was. Mm-hmm. This is a disease. It's ibtila. Mm. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibtila meaning a trial in which is a being, trial. Yeah. It's a trial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Mm-hmm. Allah does not burden his soul more than it's capable of. Mm-hmm. Just the way that someone who can't pray standing, I cannot pray salah, and I can't finish salah knowing how many rak'ahs I've prayed. Mm-hmm. I'll try my best, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from me, mm-hmm. and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept my excuse. 
if you do that, then you won't go down the rabbit hole of this waswas turning into huzn. Yeah. Because the shaitan, like Allah mentioned in the Quran, mm. the Iblis, what does he want? Liyahzuna alladheena amanu. He wants you to become sad. Mm. Okay? So if you don't have this realization, then this waswas is going to turn into what? A level of sadness, stress, mm-hmm. uh, being afraid of being punished to the extent that okay, some people, some brothers, they call me, okay, they're crying over the phone. Wallahi, they are crying. It's they're fine. hurting. They're in pain. They don't know what to do. Mm. Other people, they, they, they're sending me messages saying, you know, I can't continue like this. Some mm. are literally on the cusp of maybe even doing suicide mm. because they can't mm. live with this, with this, with, with, with these thoughts. Mm-hmm. Something serious. Well, lie, mm. it's serious. So, the first step is realize Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is more merciful to you than your own mother. Mm. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is not going to punish you for an ibtila, mm. for a disease. So realize it's a disease. It's mm. beyond your control. And what you need to do is, you need to take the steps. To cure this disease. Ty, what are some of the steps you would say? To the, no. the first step is, and the main step is, is to ignore it. Mm. The shaitan comes to you, uh, and, and just like the, uh, Muhammad said, I've, I've experienced a lot of examples. No. Same thing. And, I, and no. I see it a lot more. It begins with the tahara, wudu. I think that's where it always that's starts. That's where it starts. Yeah. So he will start making wudu. And he'll do his face, hands, he'll get to his hands like, did I do my face? I don't know. You know what? And this is the excuse, this is the whisper. Just do it again, just in case. Mm. Yeah, just, just do it again. That's where it starts, just, just in, in case. And then he does it again. You listened to that whisper. You think, you know what? There's no harm. You know, I'll do it again. But the problem is, once you've gone down that rabbit hole and you've accepted it once, mm. he's going to come to you twice, mm. three times, four times. And he gets to a stage where You'll see yourself doing it four or five times. It will get to a stage. I've seen um, two times. One time in the jamia, many times. One time in the jamia, you know, we have like the toilets where you do wudu. Yeah. I've seen a brother from Yemen. He would literally do wudu. I, I'll go toilet. I'll come back out. I'll do my wudu, and he's still like, making doing wudu. His hands. He's still doing his hands. You Starting can go and there. come back. He's still doing his hands. It's, it's west west. Yeah, yeah. I know an old man. I've seen in in um, Masjid and Nabawi. Old man is struggling, and I'm and I said, "This is what's worse." So I told him, "Ami, uncle, this is this is what's worse. You're only supposed to do it once. Don't worry about it after once. Do it once. Bismillah. Do your hands. Do that. Kharas. Wallah, he was about to cry. Akhi. Han- I know. was like, "Thank you so much. This has been bothering me for so long. I just need to do it once. I don't need to worry about it. What if? What if?" I said, "Don't think about it. The moment you ignore it, he's gonna leave you alone. The moment no. you stop listening to no. that." Maybe I should just do it again. What if I didn't do it? Well, like there's, so, the there's, there's so much to it, though. Yani, if you talk, about, practi- start, if yeah. you talk about practical yeah. steps, and this is the issue, this is the yeah. problem, which is how do you ignore it? And yeah. I know a brother who, who contacted me regarding this. Alhamdulillah, he said to me that this particular point that I made, he said it helped him a lot. Yeah. Because he would message me and he would be like, Ustad, this is the problem. How do I know it's was worse? Mm. Yeah. But, but is that, is that, is that, that nukta there? But Why but don't that's you the thing, do how do I know? No, that's the issue. Yeah. Mm. When it comes to yeah. Aqeed and Tarasi, these sort of things, yeah. the struggle that this person has is, even if he knows that he has waswas, yeah. mm. is how do I know that this particular thought, it's waswas? And it's not actually something yeah. that has substance. Mm. So, so what, did you, what did you tell to him? What I said to him is, Akhi, you already suffer from waswas. Mm. So how are you going to know if the waswas is waswas? Yeah. <laughs> I said to him, you're not going to know. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore it. Yeah, ignore, it you, ignore it all together. Ignore it all together. I said to him, don't try now and message me and say to me, Ustad, I had this distant thought. Tell me, is it was worse or not? <laughs> I said to him, listen. Amazingly. I said to him, the asal is was worse. Yeah, ignore yeah, it. Yeah. You're suffering from was worse. Yeah, yeah. You already have this disease. So, so your, your starting point is that it's was worse. Mm-hmm. Ignore it. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, Alhamdulillah, he said to me that he really benefited from this. That, you know, since I already have was worse, how can I be expected to know and filter my thoughts for what's what's worse and what's not. <laughs> you mm. can't. I said to him, you can't do that. Mm. So ignore it. He benefited from that. Alhamdulillah. And there are other, obviously other practical steps. That's why I said this wallahi needs to be a completely separate mm. episode mm. talking about what's worse, its mm. causes, practical steps, how to overgo it. I remember talking to Shaykh Al Haddadi about it. Hafidahullah. Mm. And, you know, he mentioned that same thing even here in Saudi, something very widespread amongst the Muslim Ummah. Mm-hmm. And but obviously the, the benefit of a Muslim country is here they actually have 
counselors. Yeah, of course. There are actually people there whose job, think of yeah, that's their profession. Yeah, yeah. Their profession is to have these sort of sessions with people who suffer from West to help them through it. Like in Wallah, I feel for our brothers and sisters in the West. They don't have this. They don't Same. have this. And, and those that reach out, and this particular brother who actually reached out to me, who I knew <coughs> from a city back when I was in Birmingham. Uh, no, he wasn't Birmingham. A city back in, in the UK. And he said to me, he tried to reach out to many students or du'at, but nobody would reply to him. Yeah, yeah. Nobody would. Has time for him. Because again, it's, it's counseling, Akhi. It's time. Mm. Alhamdulillah, yani, I, I helped him out. And he was a brother that was you mean really struggling. You mean they don't have Muslim counselors, right? Back in the West. Yeah, someone they deal with Uswas. He can, he can deal with it, yeah. yeah, someone who knows how to deal with the Uswas, mm. who can actually speak to this person and help mm-hmm. them out. And wallahi, mm. we wish we had time mm. to help everyone out. Yeah. But it is something. And for all of you listening, it is something that... And for all of the tulab out there and those that want to help the Muslim Ummah, wallahi, this is a need that needs to be met mm. for many of our brothers and sisters. And what I want to add to that is step number one to sort of like overcoming this or supporting our brothers and sisters it's knowing that it's there. Because mm. how many of us, unfortunately, and this is the one of the problems with this mentality that some people have, Allah musta'an, which is, I haven't seen this brother for so long. He must have become da'if. Or maybe fell he's off. mixing or he fell off. Yeah. لا, yeah. That's not how it is. You don't know what this person is going through. So. You do not know why he has stopped coming to the masjid. Mm. Maybe he stopped coming to the masjid because he felt like a fool being in the wudu area for 20 minutes. He yeah. d- and doesn't want people seeing do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I know a few brothers that literally, when the iqama goes, they'll go out to make wudu. Oh. And they're in the masjid 30 minutes before the, before the masjid. But when the iqama goes, they'll go out to make wudu because they're afraid people maybe my wudu is not all right. I know one particular uncle I used to always see in the masjid. He would join the jama'ah at the tashahud because of waswas back and forth all day. Not sure if he's got wudu or not. So the point is, you don't know why he stopped coming to the masjid. Mm. Right? So don't jump to conclusions that he's gone da'if or he's fell off it or that. He could be struggling with waswas. He could yeah. be struggling with things. Like I said, some people are on the cusps, really. you know. So and that's waswas with tahar and salah. Let's not even go to waswas when it comes to aqeedah. Yeah, La sahih. ilaha illallah. And uh, that's why, and this is really important for the tulab, yes? Specifically, I know that uh, the, a lot of the salafiyun, a lot of the a lot of the brothers and sisters, they stress yeah. when they give da'wah. Mm. They stress the angle of the importance of aqidah mm. and how you know having wrong aqidah can be very de- detrimental, mm. and how Allah doesn't forgive shirk. Okay, mm. okay, that's one janib that you focused on the janib of fear, fearing misguidance. Mm. But don't just focus on that because this is leading to individuals having was was in their aqidah, people calling me saying, Ustad. I thought of this. Please tell me there's something wrong with my aqidah. Please tell me I haven't left the, the, the fold mm, of, of Ahl Sunnah. Please this. And, and now you have to deal with that because now they're so fearful of falling into bid'ah. They're so fearful of falling into some sort of the wrong i'tiqad. It went to the opposite mm, spectrum. Okay? Yeah, so then fine. these sort of people, they need to be told that look, there's a certain level, minimum of aqidah that you need to have. That you need to know with yaqeen. And Sheikh Salah al usaymi when he teaches his... Uh, he actually mentions that. Yeah. When it comes to Iman Billah, you have to know this level. It's literally it's one sentence. Yeah. It's a sentence. Yeah. He's got that for Arkan al Islam, Arkan al Iman. When it comes to believe in Allah, these things you need to know. Believing Prophet, Sallam, these things you need to know. Okay? If you have that, if you have that, then Alhamdulillah, everything, further details that you seek knowledge about Aqidah, it's good. Mm. It increases your Iman, it keeps you firm. Okay? But if you don't have those details, you're not considered someone who's deficient in their aqidah. Mm. Yani, there are people that would come to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they would say the shahada and they would go back to their people and their companions. They mm. don't have this detailed knowledge of what will happen on day of judgment and the sirat and, and everything and all these. They don't have it. Mm. But at the same time, at the same time, they'd have the basics. They'd have the basics, number one, and they don't have false i'tiqad. Mm-hmm. Okay? That, the problem is that right now, you start believing something that has no basis. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. How do you overcome that? It's very easy. Mm-hmm. Just make sure nothing goes in except something from Quran and Sunnah that you can trust. Mm-hmm. If you do that and you have the basis, then Alhamdulillah, your aqeed is fine. Your aqeed is fine. And don't feel like, you know, that, that you're deficient in your aqeed. So it's, it's a, we need to treat the issue with balance. So, 
we need to be aware that sometimes the way we teach things, mm -hmm. we have to have balance, you fear know. and hope. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's a lot of people out there upon the Outer Salafiyah who live in a state of fear, mm -hmm. who need to be told that don't worry, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not hold you accountable for this, or or don't do not fear this. And and I mean, it's 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 a long topic, but. Oh, May Allah reward the brother for bringing this up. And it's something that needs to be dealt with in a separate podcast. Inshallah. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affair, Allah Mustan. So with the final segment today, Inshallah Ta'ala, we're dealing with uh, kind of like an intro to the names and attributes of Allah Ta'ala. Wa ta and um, this is a topic that I think you picked, right? You want to discuss? Yeah, I mean... Um, if we tied... I mean, it's a break from Khawarij. For one. All right? Uh, but but one of the reasons why I think it's an important topic to to mention, mm -hmm. apart from some of the clips that have been going around recently, mm -hmm. from Muhammad Hijab and his likes making fun of the aqid of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, mm -hmm. who we believe in the names and attributes of Allah, and calling it Hinduism, la hawla la quwwata illa billah. Apart from that, yes, um, remember when we talked about uh, some of the attributes or some some masail or some issues. That really expose Ahl al Bidah. Doesn't mm. matter which sect they, yeah, they belong of to. Yeah. This is one of them. Yes. This this topic, the aqidah in the names and attributes of Allah, you'll find that all of the sects mm -hmm. have a level of deviant mm -hmm. uh, deviancy in this particular topic. Jimmy. This is really one of the things that sets apart Al Firqatun Naji. That's why Shaykh Al Islam Nutaymiyyah, Rahmatullah Ali, in his famous book, Al Aqidatul mm. Wasitiyah, when he talks about the aqid of al-firqatul naji, the aqid of the saved sect, mm -hmm. this is the first thing he mentions. Jimmy. The first thing he mentions. So, so before we j jump into it, let me just give the yeah. people just a general intro of what, you know, uh, the names and the attributes is connected to. So obviously no. it's connected to tawheed. No. And the scholars traditionally have broken tawheed into three categories. So some break it into two, but some break it into three. A lot of them break it into three. And that is tawheed al-rububiyyah, which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his lordship. No. Then you have tawheed al-uluhiyyah. Type. So that's the oneness of Allah Ta'ala regards to what? His worship of yeah. him alone without any partners. Then you have Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat and that's dealing with Allah Ta'ala in regards to his names and his attributes. Yeah. So this is not something which is new. It's something which has been discussed in a lot of the books of Aqidah and Tawheed in from Aqidah the very doesn't talk beginning. About it. Exactly. So you'll have some of the different, you know, um, uh, authors before they would name it maybe different <coughs> names, right? They might not say like a Tawheed or, you know, Aqidah Asma wa Sifat. They might say like Kitab al-Sunnah. No. Right, in that book, in there you have riwayat dealing with the names and the attributes of Allah Taala. Yeah. You have a Sharia, and it will deal with what the names of Allah Taala and His attributes. Yeah. Then you have, you know, different things directed specifically to that. But the point is, is that it's not something new. Yeah. It's something that's been talked about for some time. It's yeah. not something that you know people of today have made up, or some Wahhabis, or some whatever, oh, some yeah. neo group have come Tipping together, like, yeah. and now all of a sudden we're affirming things to Allah Taala that He didn't affirm to Himself. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So oh, he came with something new that didn't exist yeah. at the time of the companions or the likes. Exactly. So I want to give that intro just to understand it or let the viewers and listeners understand it. You know, um, uh, Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat is not a new concept. It's something which is very old and it's part of Tawheed in its essence. A Muslim needs to understand and believe in the, the Sifat, the names of Allah Ta'ala and his descriptions. Yeah. And uh, there's obviously books that have been written on it. Some of the best books, uh, Sheikh Uthameen had probably the most simplest book, yeah, right, sure. on this topic right here, dealing with the names and the attributes of Allah Tabarak Ta'ala. No. And it's been translated into English, the English language. Um, and, and some of the fitan, or the trials and tribulations the Ummah went through, this is one of the, I mean, after, it came after the Khawarij, obviously, but it's one of the fitan that happened in the early yeah. generations, at the time of Imam mm. Ahmed, rahmatullahi mm. alayhi. You know, that's, mm. that's when it really kicked off, if you like. No. You know, so it's not something new. You'll find speech of this, Imam Bukhari dealt with it. No, <laughs> Imam Ahmed dealt with it. Sahih. Al Shafi dealt with it. All sahih. the four Aimma, you know. You have even from the oldest of those that talked about specifically the word Tawheed mm. and mentioning in the Asma Sifat, Imam Al Tahawi, Al Hanafi, mm. Mm. Al Hanafi, mm. Madhab, Imam Al Tahawi, who died in the fourth, early fourth century, 300 or something, can't remember mm. right now exactly. Mm. And he mentions Tawheed by name. No. I want to I wanna find it, inshallah, if you guys yeah, yeah, allow. Yeah, 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 of course. And he mentions Asma Sifat at the beginning. Subhanallah. And then someone wants to come along today and be like, Wahhabi. Is he Wahhabi? 
<laughs> Some people <laughs> they say <laughs> Ibn Taymiyyah <laughs> is the first person to bring around the categorization. <laughs> 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 he's in the fourth century. <laughs> You'll see the, the later scholars they did a little bit more of organizing the topics, yeah. and putting him into maybe a web or something like this. But yeah. the concept was always the there. origin is there. The, not just the Us, concept, yeah. the, 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 the actual <laughs> war. <laughs> the actual fighting, the actual rudu, exactly. the reputations, the exactly. defending of the religion. I mean, there are scholars that have been imprisoned in defense of this. Imam Ahmed spent years and years and years in defense of this madhab. Subhanallah. Of, of, and, and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba. And uh, in Aslan, the, the concept is in Quran and Sunnah. Quran and Sunnah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> <It's the Quran. laughs> yeah. Of course. Uh, yes, and Allah has the most mm. beautiful of names, so yeah. call him by them. Uh, Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says in his book, Al Aqidah al Wasitiyah. And Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah died in the 8th century. He says, uh, bear with me. Here it is. After the uh, introduction, he says, mm-hmm. He says, The creed of the saved sect, that is, Mansura uh, uh, until the Day of Judgment, Ahl um, Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, is. الإيمان بالله وملائكته وكتب رسله mentions the six pillars of iman and then he says ومن الإيمان بالله and from the belief in Allah عز وجل is الإيمان بما وصف به نفسه في كتابه وبما وصفه به رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم من غير تحريف ولا تعطيل ومن غير تكييف ولا تمثيل بل يؤمنون بأن الله سبحانه وتعالى ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير and in short that means from the from the belief of Allah عز وجل the first pillar of iman is and he mentions the definition of asma sifat which is to believe in that which Allah Azawajal has described himself with in mm. his book in the Quran mm-hmm. number one so the Quran is our source in the attributes and names of Allah mm-hmm. and that which the messenger وسلم, has described Allah with mm-hmm. and then you stay away from four things mm-hmm. without distortion mm-hmm. distorting the names and attributes of Allah Azawajal. give an example okay tfaddal <laughs> 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 Like for example, the Ash'aris, no. mm. they say for example, when Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran that he created Adam with his own both two hands, mm. they say with his strength, power. His, yeah, with his no. power and, and, and his... They will uh, distort the meaning hand and they'll give it another meaning. Another meaning. Mm. No. Okay? That's distortion. Um, so that's distortion. Basically saying that Allah doesn't mean hands, he means this yeah. without a proof. Yeah. That's distortion now. Yeah. So that's distortion, Ahsan. So that's the first one. Without distortion, tahrif. Uh-huh. Without ta'atil Ta'atil yeah. is to negate basically uh-huh. Allah doesn't have hands Allah no. doesn't have hands at all yeah. um, right. uh-huh. Without mentioning how uh-huh. That attribute or that name of Allah Azawajal is Allah Azawajal he has a hand And we have a hand uh-huh. The kafiyah of it The how of it is different Okay so You to don't make say the, for example now, th- yeah. To make it clo- uh, We've got a watch in here yeah, yeah. Doing it? Yeah, I don't know if the watch. camera is going to catch that. Which watch? The clock. Oh, the clock, okay. <laughs> okay. I learned this when I was a kid, alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah. It sticks with me. I always yeah. mention this in my lessons. The clock has a hand. We call it right hand, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's called hand. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is the clock's hand and our hand the same? Of course yeah. not. Even though it shares the same name. Uh-huh. So the reality of it is different. Uh-huh. Even animals. Between the creation uh-huh. and an animal's face and our faces, this is the same. They only share the name, but the reality of it is different. Exactly. Even in other makhluqat, in Jannah, we have fruits. And in the dunya, we have fruits. The only similarity between those fruits is in the name. Exactly. No one has seen similar the, to the fruits. The reality of it, we don't know exactly how it is. Ilm exactly. Just like that, Allah Azawajal has a hand. Allah has a face. But it is not the same as the creation at all. No. The how of it, the reality of it, Allah Azawajal did not tell us. Exactly. So what you're saying is that we establish, obviously the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah Jama'ah is that we establish the attributes in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has spe- said about himself. Mm-hmm. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said about the, uh, yeah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mm-hmm. in the authentic ahadith. Yeah. Going into the cave, meaning we do not establish it and talk about, you know, we do not talk how about how is. it is. Yeah. Rather, we say it is most befitting for Allah to put the in his essence. Uh, and we don't say Allah has a hand with five fingers mm. yeah. without we, delete. We say, or is, is this big, or that small, or is this color, mm. or whatever. Mm. Yani. Mm. We don't give any takif, any sort of description of how it is. It's because befitting Allah for his essence. Yeah, no. we just say Allah that. Allah didn't tell us about this. Yes. Yes. So we stop with the nusus. Be- and that and this leads in, his majesty. And this leads into one of the qawaid that Sheikh Uthimi mentioned, which is that the asma. Well, uh, or which meaning meaning we need specific 
you need evidence. enough yeah. evidence from Quran and Sunnah to tell us about this name yeah. and attribute before, we, say before we establish it or say it about Allah Taala. We don't yeah. speak about Allah Taala except with him, yeah. knowledge. Well, I talk of my legs like a be in the sum of Wal-Basr, Wal-Fuad, the Kulu, Ulaik, Kana, and Humasuda. Indeed, don't speak about Allah Taala without knowledge. Indeed, all of those things will be asked about your heart, your any what you say, and, your speech, etc. And this is Wallahi, this is the essence of logic. No, mm. Wallahi, this is the essence of logic that how can someone tell us about Allah mm. who hasn't seen Allah? <laughs> so. how, who is best or who is the one that can tell us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than Allah himself? Mm. And that's what Shaykh Abdul Salam Taymi obviously mentions he in mentions his no. as well. Well, Allah has mentioned by himself. Yes. Yeah. I know he even explains that at the end as yeah, well yeah. that Allah, he is the one that can only tell us about himself. No. Now, why do we say also hadith Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Not because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes, has seen Allah Yes, but because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't talk except with wahi. Mm-hmm. So what he tells us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is what he heard from Jibreel. That Jibreel heard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mm-hmm. there's no other source that we can rely on mm-hmm. or that we can mention mm-hmm. to tell us about the creator about Allah other than Allah himself. No. That's so, logic. So going into it a little bit more so we can get into some of the qua and maybe um, before the end of the podcast. Temthil, didn't mention temthil yeah, the last one, the last one. Uh, yeah. a temthil is, yeah. is uh, resembling. Mm. No. We don't resemble Allah to the creation and we don't resemble the creation to Allah. Mm. No. And that's, uh, that's really important. So don't say Allah's hand shay. is like our hands. No. Yeah. Allah's descending to the lower yeah. the sky is like our descending. Mm. Allah rising above the throne is the way we rise above our chair. That's <coughs> temthil. And no. the opposite true. You don't no. give any of the khasa'is specific to Allah Azawajal, like specific to Allah attributes specific to Allah it's to the creation no. No. so like the Christians they say Jesus is God, God. Mm-hmm. No. or um, um, other than the people that give like they say oh those awliya and those righteous people they answer the dua mm. no. whilst they're dead also adding to that no. um, what Sheikh Uthameen he ended up bringing in his kawaii talking about this is uh, very 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 similar to Tamfil yeah. which, which is what? Tashbih, no, tashbih yeah. which is making some type of re- resemblance. Yeah. Yeah. So they, the scholars say the only difference between tamfil and tashbih is tamfil means you're attributing exactly how it is. Yeah. No. Meaning his is like ours. Yeah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Whereas tashbih, tashbih is resembling some likeness yeah. to yeah. ours. Yeah. And this is also something that we stay far away from. Yeah. Yeah. Even though Shaykh Sam he mentions that we should stick to what the Quran has mentioned. Aywa. Allah said, yeah, he says, the So word that's why we say tamthil. Tamthil yeah. is better than tashbih because that's the word, the word Allah has used in his book. No. He actually yeah. mentions that in the munadhara that I was talking to you about. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, and even for tahrif, some people say, bila ta'ati, bila, uh, ta- ta'wil. Naam, ta'wil but he says, I prefer to say tahrif because Allah has called it that in the Quran. Naam. 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 So he tried to stick Exactly no. to the wordings of the Quran Allah in these Allah. four words. Jameen, so um, I'm going to go through some of the notes that I had yeah. Ta- yeah. connected to this topic. You guys yeah. can stop me whenever you guys see fit. Yeah. Yeah. But the first qaida in which Shaykh Uthameen, rahimahu wa ta'ala, he was speaking about in his book was that the first one that you need to understand about the names of Allah ta'ala is that all of Allah ta'ala's names are beautiful and they have a meaning Allah. and it's befitting to his majesty. Allah. Yani, and we don't, we don't negate these names. They are established with him. And they have, a, they have a meaning as in when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he's As-Sami' Al-Basir. No. These are not just names without a meaning. Exactly. Like like names that we might have, for example. You might someone might have a son or a child and call them Mars. Okay, the Mars is one thing, this person is one thing, two different things. But that's not with the names and attributes of Allah. No. Every name Allah has told us in the Quran about himself, it's a name that has a meaning. That is suitable to Allah Which leads us to the second qaida, which is no. what all of his names, Allah Ta'ala, Ta'ala is they're alam with awsaf. No. Yani they're titles, but they also have descriptions. Yeah. They're not blanket no. statements, blanket names without any meanings connected to it. Yeah. Rather, there is meanings behind it. We yeah. don't say that it's, it doesn't have any meaning connected no. to that. No. So, and every name comes with uh, a sifa already connected to it. So, no. Al Rahman automatically connects to the no. mercy Rahman. of Allah, Ta'ala, no. Allah his, rah, his Rahman. No. Right? So this is how we are to understand it. No. You guys need anything on that one before we go on to the next one? It's fine, yeah. No. Tayyip, the yeah, next so, I mean, I don't know if you can mention from the Qawaii. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. want to wanna <laughs> jump over it. But it's up to you. It's up to you. Go ahead. When it comes to the, the name and, and, and the sifa, mm-hmm. that we, if there's an attribute of Allah, mm-hmm. m- even mention the Quran and the Sunnah, mm-hmm. you don't now take the attribute and make a name from the names of Allah. No. 
Is that one of Doc Wise? Yeah, yeah he mentioned that. Mentioned that. So yeah. pretty much it doesn't go backwards. Yeah. yeah. yeah and if the name always has an attribute connected no. to the name. No. As far as the attribute itself, then that doesn't necessitate that there is a name for it. No. Okay? No. So we don't, it work, doesn't go both ways like this. So every Example. name has attributes, but not every attribute is a name of Allah. Exactly. Yes. Example. Every name of Allah. Okay, so a name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. The no. attribute that's connected to it is Ar-Rahman. No. But for example, um, I can't think of the Innahum top of my head. Kayda, hey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plotting against the kuffar in is return an, for an, their plots. Is an attribute. Mm. Is, an, is an attribute. We're or not going to say Allah is al-Kaid. Al-Kaid. Yes. Right. He rose above his throne. Uh, his we don't throne. say he's al exactly. al exactly. We don't give him that name now. Yeah. Exactly. No. Uh, moving on to the next one, and obviously I'm skipping through this. You guys can yeah, see yeah. my notes are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got kind of caught up in reading it yesterday, and yeah, I just yeah. start writing down John things. So. You don't want to turn it into a dead sir. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the next one um, is that Allah Taala when we mentioned this is that His names are Tawqifiya. No. Like there's no place for intellect, free thinking in regards to His names. Yeah. No. That which Allah Taala mentioned about Himself, we established. Yeah. And we establish yeah. the meaning that goes along with it. It has yeah. to be explicitly in the Explicit. Quran and the Sunnah. It can't be analogy. It can't. There's no qiyas. No. There's no aql. I think this ijtihad. No. And we use the same name. Exactly. The same. The same name. The way Allah said it. Mm. No. What do you mean? Uh, the next thing. Well, the like asani. They say about asani. Yeah. They call Allah asani. Mm. No. The scholars they mention that. Call him al khaliq. Al bari. Yeah, yeah. Al-Fatir You can't give a synonym <laughs> You can't get a synonym Yeah you can't get a synonym yeah. And then be like Oh okay so if Allah is Al-Khaliq Then also he yeah, must be as well as Sani mm-hmm. La, We don't say no, that Or like they say sometimes They say Muhandis Al-Muhandis al kon The engineer of the of the universe La, mm. We don't say that No Jimmy no. Uh, Also something that we I think I skipped over a little bit But like we said These are A'lam wa Osaf right yeah. A'lam meaning titles no. So all these different titles Do go back to one thing yeah. Which is Allah Taala. No. They're not separate. Oh and yeah. Some, some people, people would try to, Yeah, they would try to. They would try to say, oh, so you you, you worship Al Rahman, but you also went worship Al Ghafur. Yeah, these are, these yeah are you're doing shirk now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they say these are different, right? That's that's why the the the, the, the extreme Jahmiya. Mm. When we uh, when we mention these names and attributes, mm. they call that shirk. We call it Tawheed. They call it shirk. <laughs> why you call it shirk? Well, Subhanallah. because you worship Al Samia and Al Basir, yeah, and, and these Indonesia are different. It's yeah. like, wait a minute, your Abu Muad. Yeah. And you're Abdul Hamid. No. Sah? No. They're two different Zainab. people. <laughs> <laughs> and Abu Zainab. Sah? Sah. Yeah, it's two different things. Yeah. They're the same thing. Talking about exactly. the same, same thing. Different no. attributes. It's yeah. not. It's not different. Th- they're all different names or different attributes for, the, for, for the, that and for one essence, which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Exactly. Yeah. However, the descriptions are all different. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning the titles, meanings. yes, yeah. they go back to one. Yeah. As no. far as the description, as well, Allah, al, al, obviously, al. Uh, Al Ghafur is different from Al Rahman. Yeah, it's got as a different meaning. As far as the description, no. right? Yeah. So this one we need to make sure we also no. differentiate it with. No. Um, we already talked about the names being Tawqifiyah. So then it goes into the kinds of deviation regarding these these uh, Asma wa Sifat. And I think you guys mentioned some yeah, of them. But yeah. it goes back to what? Il Had. Yeah. Il Had regarding Allah Ta'ala's names and attributes, which is what? And I'm just going to read this really quickly. Il Had with regards to the names and attributes means that they stray from the obligatory manner of believing in, in them meaning they have some type of crook crop thought and Allah Ta'ala tells us to stay away from those people who make ilhad regarding his names no. No. so and mm. abandon those who commit ilhad regarding his names no. but Allah, will, Allah will recompense them for what they did Ay. but important note though just oh. to mention that maybe someone knows what ilhad means in Arabic Ay. There's two istilah. There's the istilah, the, the wording that's used in the Quran, and and and, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. talking Sahih. about the four things that we basically mentioned: distorting the meaning, distorting or canceling out, etc. Resemblance, exactly. But in the modern day usage of ilhad, yeah, we hear it has, which is completely ilhad different. Means atheism yeah. in yeah. today's usage. Sahih. No. So Sahih. it has two meanings. We're talking about the first. The meaning yeah. in the Quran Sunnah. Yeah. That's, that's why they call it. There's three, the haqaiq yeah. are different. You got haqiqah. لغوية yeah. حقيقة شرعية حقيقة عرفية yeah. so um, حقائق how would you because because الحاد الحاد the technical meaning of it is yeah. to turn away that's why mm-hmm. they say linguistic meaning linguistic linguistic meaning is to turn from something yes that's where the grave is you put it down then no. into a corner no. mm. so don't straight no. away and abandon the, yeah. the correct that's a linguistic way of meaning. attributing shari it. meanings like we've mentioned yeah. exactly and then you got the عرفي meaning which not عرف is uh, you would say istilahi no no the one the atheism now استلاحي. استلاحي. It's specific is like a 
It's like a fan. A term yeah. that came, yeah, terminology. exactly. Specific oh. terminology. Yeah. So, no. it's like, no. so El Hayat, generally speaking, is everything we talked about, yeah. which is, uh, for example, the four things that we mentioned. The ta'atil, what yeah. the jahmiyyah do, no. right? No. Which is um, negating these names and attributes of Allah Taala, okay. tashbih or tamfil, or any of these different things. They're all considered El Hayat yeah. of Allah yeah. Taala's names and attributes, or even calling Allah Taala names in which He did not name Himself. No. no. This is also considered Il had, had no. like we say with the Christians. They, they called him the Father, Ahsans. right? No. And then what? You might have some people do the same thing yeah. in Islam. This is called Il Had in the names of Allah Taala. No. Because why? Like we said, the names of and attributes of Allah Taala is tawqifiyya. Yeah. No. So we can't come and make something up from ourselves. I mean, Akhi, if you don't like me calling you names, yes, mm. that you haven't either given yourself or you're not happy with, and I start calling you names that you're not that you're not happy with. Mm. That would upset you, right? Of course. How about the creator now? You come up with names. How do you know when you come up with the name and you make that name of Allah, how do you know Allah is pleased with that? How do you know? What proof do you have that Allah Ta'ala is pleased for you to call him Asani or whatever name you want? What proof do you have? Sahih. That's one thing. And on the other side as well, the other opposite as well. Hmm. If I deny names that you have, and I say, you're not Abdul Hamid, you're not Muhammad, and, or even good attributes that you have, that you're known for, mm. mashallah. But I say to you, no, khalas. Akhi, you're not a graduate of Jamaat al-Imam. You're not a graduate of Medina. Yeah, 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 you're like, Akhi, what are you talking about? I mean, I am a graduate. Yani, yeah. that, that's applied to me. Or even worse, they say, yeah, yeah, Abdul Hamid is a graduate, but he never studied anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you graduate? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have a meaning. <laughs> so <laughs> if that's the creation... It goes against so logic, <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> doesn't make sense, yeah. <laughs> so if, if that's when it comes to the creation, yeah. they, they like you to... Or even titles. Well, even titles. Mm. Flan is doctor. Mm. Huh? He's yeah. doctor. Yeah. Yeah. If he's in an in a official setting and you're introducing him, mm-hmm. right? and you don't even call him doctor. Yeah, I like yeah, Ustad, yeah, yeah. Fulani, whatever, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah. like it. Yeah, in certain formal gatherings, that's, I think it's looked down on, even amongst yeah. the kufar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody's a PhD, yeah. doctor. Yeah. And you say just so and so. Yeah. They're like, no, yeah. no, call me doctor or professor. Yeah, yeah. they'll even, yeah. Ad- yeah, they'll even address yeah. it, right? But even yeah, yeah. the royals, they got certain titles, titles don't they? Yeah, yeah, sorry. You don't give them the titles, they'll be upset. Yeah, yeah, right? sorry. And the Khadim al Sharif, if you don't give them the title that he has, you just call him Qala Salman bin Abdul Aziz. It's disrespectful, yeah, it's disrespectful. How about the creator? La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. Say, well, people, they might think, what's the big deal? La. This is the first pillar of your Iman, Al Imanu Billah. It's a serious issue. Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا no. Who's more unjust than the one who invents a lie against Allah Subhanallah oh. Moving on That was all okay. the things we mentioned so far uh, You had something? Uh, I'm trying to find it No, 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 go ahead When you find it, just let us know there's, 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 there's a Bedawi, a Bedouin eh. That met Ja'ad uh, Dirham or Jahan bin Safwan Jahmiya Jahmiya, the ulama consider them kuffar Because they negate the names and attributes of Allah and so they were saying things like, uh, Allah is, is he's got, he's Rahman, mm. but he doesn't have no mercy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Samir, but he can't hear. Samir bila basar. Yeah. So then he refuted him. I'm going to find these lines of poetry, amazing lines yeah, of poetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He refuted him. So the, the earlier we were talking about pretty much principles connected to the names of Allah. Now yeah. going into some of the principles concerning his attributes. Yeah. That's what I want to just go through, yeah. generally speaking. So I just got some of the, the heads of these different yeah, any yeah. chapters and we can add to it as we like so yeah. the first one is that all of them all the attributes of Allah are perfect they're not deficient Allah. right they're not yeah, any, there's no naqs we don't attribute no type of naqs to Allah to Allah, and whatsoever no. right so that was the first thing that I, that I had uh, moving on we could say Allah Ta'ala's knowledge uh, or knowledge of Allah's attributes is more expansive than the knowledge of the names and we talked about this earlier yeah. which is that it doesn't go both ways right so the name goes into the attributes but the attributes can be defined and expanded upon in no. a way that doesn't yani, apply, to, apply to a name no. perfect no. then um, uh, did you find it or yeah, not? yeah I found it uh, fadl, fadl, go ahead no, go on. you sure? yeah, yeah Kamil. Hey, طيب. also dealing with the attributes of Allah Ta'ala, which we already talked about but yani, I just want to give it maybe even Ziyad to the beats especially in this day and age where people are talking about the foot of Allah Ta'ala, right? Yeah. So we say what? <laughs> yeah. So we say what? The foot is not unknown. The details are it of it is incom- in, 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 incomprehensible. So we can't really exactly the way it is. To, yeah, we can't get to what it really is. We can't understand the exactly how, how it is. How. Look, believing know, in it is obligatory. One we second. know the Be- meaning. Believing it into it in it is obligatory though. Yeah. Questioning it, however, is innovation. Simple. And this was the the understanding of the salaf, statement of Imam Malik. 
Mm. This is basically what Imam Malik said to that individual. Mm. He actually asked Imam Malik this story. Everybody needs to know this. Mm. He asked Imam Malik, Al Rahman al Ash istawa. Kif istawa. How did Allah rise above his throne? Imam Malik started sweating, akhi. Angry. Angry. He started sweating. Became really upset by the question. And that's when he said to him, Al istiwa'u ma'alum. Al ghair majhul. The istiwa rising as a meaning of what it means. Like. Because this is all, goes down another path of deviation, which is al mufawwida al yufawwidun al ma'na. Those that say, okay, Allah is a hand, but we don't know what hand means. It could be anything. The hand could be a foot. That's what they say. You mm. know, they say, yeah. hand, you know, we're we not going to reject it because Allah said he has a hand. We're not going to go down the path of ash'ariyah, doing tahrif. But what we'll say is, Allah has a we hand. We don't know the meaning. We don't know the meaning. We don't we know what a hand leave, means. We leave the meaning to Allah. So Allah. Need, la. That's what Imam Malik said. Al istiwa wa ma'lu. We know what rising above means. In the language. In, In the language. Lakin al kayfu majhul. Exactly. How, how, it is? how Allah rose above the throne? That is something we don't know. Mm. So we do tafweed of this. No. We say al kayfiya, we don't know. No. Okay? Wa al imanu bihi wajib. Al imanu bihi wajib. No. And believing in it is obligation. We have to believe in it. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, Rahman al Ashtawa. Yeah, we don't have to believe in the Quran. <laughs> we have to believe in everything the Quran has mentioned. Sahih. Was su'alu anha. Asking about it is an innovation. So just the act of asking about it, how, when it comes to the name and attributes of Allah, it's an innovation. It's something that no companion has done. And that's an interesting point that you brought up. Actually, there was, uh, Sheikh Uthimi mentions in that book that that statement is actually the narration that goes back to Um Salama. No. So it actually originate, originated amongst the companions, which is this this understanding of the Asma wa Sifat. Not asking yeah, I mean, questions. What, what the, st- the, st- ima- the statement of the, the imam, same, imam yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was actually a narration. How. Yeah, exactly. So they understood how. this amongst the companions, and, the and they didn't ask. And they didn't ask how. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How many names and attributes, and even the Quran he he recited to the companions they memorized. Mm. Give us one narration, one narration, fakat. Mm. But a companion said, "Oh, Messenger of Allah, how? Mm-hmm. You won't find it." No. As a matter of fact, you have the narration of the Arabi when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned Allah laughs. He said, "Lana adi ma khaira min Rabbin yeah, yadhak." Yeah, <laughs> Allah Taala says that uh, they mentioned the hadith that mentions that Allah Taala laughs. Mm. Okay, so this Arabi said, "We will we will not be deprived of khair from a Lord who laughs." Allah Akbar. See, see, accepting the meaning of it, he yeah. understood the meaning, but he didn't ask how. No. Okay, and this really comes down to the marbat al faras. Mm. This is really where we come down to the crux of the matter. Why did this deviation? In this even happen? Why did people deviate in this? Do you know why? Hmm. Because those people, I mean, this is something that everyone that's deviating this path have in common. They all have this, this one thing in common. All of them, when they hear the attribute, they do tashbih in their aqal. Hmm. They start thinking, resembling. They start resembling Allah to His creation in their mind. No. Now, that's Any the logic, problem. Logic. Mantic. Logic. So, when, when, for example, they say, okay, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, that means he has to have a voice box. Exactly. He has to have lips. Exactly. He has to have tooth. Re- relying on the logic. They're, They're like, okay, so what? But that's that's how we speak. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, what do we do? Some are like, okay, it can't be speaking because we speak with these things. Mm-hmm. Others said no, and they r- negated. Mm. And others they said, okay, well, and then what? Allah, s- Allah speaks. Okay, he's got a tongue like our tongue. Sahih. He's got a voice box like our voice box. Sahih. So they went they went down that Two path. Two extremes. Two extremes. But the, the the essence of it, where it started. And for example, when Muhammad Hijab says, in that clip, right? Yeah. And he goes like, they say Allah has a face and Allah has eyes. and Allah. This is Hinduism. Why? He's applying his logic. He's yes. applying logic to something. So he's like, something which billah, should... how can you exactly. say Allah has hands like our hands? No. And Nobody that necessitates... said Allah has got hands like our hands. Exactly. And that necessitates yeah. tajseem and that necessitates a body. And that... La, ya yeah. None of that. Yeah. Yeah. And in your head. that befits Allah Azza wa Jal. No. And then apply the ayah. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. There's nothing like unto him. And he says, no. no. He's the all hearing, all seeing. Allah, Allah says there's nothing unto him, no resemblance. And at the same time, Allah affirms that he's the all hearing, all seeing. Allah Akbar. Allah is hearing, akhi. You, can you hear beyond the wall? Huh? Okay. If me and him speak at the same time, <laughs> you can hear both of us? La. <laughs> Ta'ib, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know from his hearing, from mm. what we know his hearing is mm. like, Aisha radiallahu anha said, that subhana, when she said, when that uh, Sahabiya came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to complain yeah. about yeah. her husband, yeah. she was by the door. Qad sami'a Allah qawl al-lati tujadiluka. Naam, the verse. Qad sami'a Allah qawl al-lati tujadiluka. She mentioned that. I heard some of her words 
and some of it I missed, even though she's just behind the door. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Wasi'a Samahu al Aswat. Allah heard this. Allah says, Qad Samia, from above the seven heavens. And I couldn't hear it when she's Allah here. Allah. She said, Subhanallah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears all of us simultaneously at the same time. How then, when Allah says, Who was Samia al Basir? Are you thinking of AIDS? Kayf. <laughs> you know, are you thinking of this instrument Allah has given you and then you're negating it, saying Allah can't. And this obviously not the, the, the Ash'ari don't negate. Yeah. The Ash'ari don't negate all the seven. There are seven like attributes seven that don't negate. Yeah. Yeah. And that same point, Sheikh Fahad mentioned a nice fa'id like that. He said that same fa'id in, in the, in the um, hearing of Allah Azza wa Jal, it transcends the walls. We can only hear what's in these walls. Allah no. can hear everything that's in the alam. No. Alameen. And likewise, the sight, our sight, maybe you can see 10 kilometers, maybe you can see that much. Like in, there's a had that we can't go further. Mm-hmm. Just like our hearing, there's a had that we can't hear further. Mm-hmm. Allah Jal transcends that. He, he, nothing's in his way. Yeah. No. The same is for our aql. There's a aql, there's only so much that you can understand. And then after it, you can't understand. Just like your sight, there's only so much that your sight can go. Hakada aqluka. So. The kafi of Allah Azza wa Jal aqluka akhila to drink. Exactly. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal He said, Aslan, laysa kamithil hi shay, and that should be enough for you. Cut off the door of asking how. Hmm. Sahih. Whatever you think of, Sahih. whatever you imagine, Allah laysa kadalik. Hadi qaida. When you hear Asami al Basir, and you're thinking of your attributes of Sam and Basar, Whatever comes to your mind, you sit down all day, all night to try and imagine it. Whatever comes to your mind, Allah laysa kadhalik. Because Allah is beyond that which you can so, comprehend. So this also goes into something we mentioned about the asma, but also goes into the attributes as well, is that the attributes are also tawqifiyah. No. There are also things in which are, yani you need some type of delil for them. It don't, we don't enter into the bab or free thinking or no logic or intellects into this bab and start Imagining how in the cave, things like that. I think it, it, it ties into a much bigger theme, mm. which is wahi and aql. That's aql it. Aql and naql. Well, that's that's it. what it comes down that's to. That's it. Which is, what is your, what's the p- what place is, of your logic? Wahi, what is it, wahi? Uh, revelation. <laughs> what's the place of your <laughs> logic? <laughs> Ahsan, what's the place of your logic when it comes to revelation, mm. Quran and Sunnah? Excuse me, I just want to give one example. So, one example that we in this day and age can relate to. Mm. Contemplate on the story of Isra and Mi'raj. Isra and Mi'raj. Mm. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah took him, Isra, mm. from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis. And then Mi'raj from Bayt al-Maqdis to the seventh heaven. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Quraysh, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Quraysh about what took place, they said, Khalas. <laughs> they said, that's it. Muhammad is finished. We've got him. We've got him. We've got him. He, he is claiming that he went to Jerusalem Just and back in one night when it takes us one month. And contemplate on one thing though. They had no issue with the Mi'raj. <laughs> they had the issue with Isra. Yeah. Yani, Mi'raj, okay, that's beyond us. You want seventh heaven, whatever. You know, you, you already said Jibreel comes with Wahya. Eh? But wait a minute, there's something here that we can feel. Something that our logic now, something that is logical something to us. Something that we've done before. Something we've one done month before. journey. How you go to Jerusalem and come back the same night. That is crazy. Yes. So they came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr said to them, I accepted that Wahya comes from seventh heaven. Why can't I accept that he went to Jerusalem overnight? Yani, mm. What's the big deal? Yeah. He said, if he said it, I believe in it. Allah Akbar. Sah? That's yeah. why he was called a Siddiq. That's why he's called a Siddiq. This issue was so strong that it even had effect on some of the new Muslims. That's how big of a of a, of a fitna that it was. Hmm. Fast forward fourteen hundred years. <laughs> Can someone go to Jerusalem and come back overnight? Sahih. Uh, no, and uh, right now, hmm. yeah. Quraysh disbelieved. Yeah. Because more because of the Isra than the Mi'raj. Yeah, yeah. How can you go to Jerusalem and come back in a month? Huh? To this day and age now, with technology, can someone go to Jerusalem overnight and be back? Yep. The answer is? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to accept it, huh? yeah. yep. That shows you the limit of your intellect. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Quraysh disbelieved, rejected Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a whole da'wah. Because no. they couldn't accept that he went to Jerusalem. But right now you have what? I mean, bring someone, akhi, 14 and years ago, give him a phone, akhi. He'll say to you, what's his tone talking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you turn the speaker on on your phone, what's he going to do? <laughs> Wallah, shaitan is going to run, akhi. He's going to run a mile. <laughs> this is this the limit of your logic. You want to bring that logic? And I'll be like, how can Allah descend? How can Allah descend in the last third? 
of the night. When the last third of the night in Riyadh is different from the UK, is different from America, how's that possible? Yeah, and Allah descends all the time. Yeah, yeah. Akhi. Yeah, Akhi. <laughs> mukhak fi mukhak, ya akhi. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah, this this is uh it, it goes into that last the last uh what we re- we 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 read, which is that Allah's knowledge and attributes are more expensive than his knowledge of his names and his attributes, subhanAllah, as Allah says in the Quran, English translation here. And if every tree on earth was a pen and the sea was extended seven times over and used his ink, the words of Allah Ta'ala would still not be finished. <laughs> Verily Allah Ta'ala is almighty and all wise. And we see that Allah Ta'ala yani his knowledge encompasses everything. And we can't even begin to begin to think in that same type of light as Allah says ilma, and they cannot encompass his knowledge so I mean when you put it in this essence and we're talking about the names and the attributes and talking about it being tawqifiyah and stopping it's, it's very simple honestly Damn, it, it makes it very you know, to the point very direct we don't need to get into the whole the the logistics. Logistics. <laughs> it's easier than what, what they do exactly exactly it's so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's this aqidah it's an aqidah that is in line with the fitrah no and many of these philosophers, Ahlul Kalam, Ahlul Mantiq, after many, many years of hayrah and going down this rabbit hole, they will die on their deathbed and there's many rations on that in Tahawiyah whereby they say, we went back to the aqidah of Nisabur. is Nisabur. And from them is... From the old ladies of Nisabur, we went back to their aqidah and sahih. we're happy with this. Exactly. From them is the kibar, the, the, the biggest of them. Yeah. Al-Ghazali. Yeah. Sahih. Abu Hamid yeah. Sahih. all of them at the end of their life they're all known to have made Tawbah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. this one he at the end of After his deathbed he had Sahih Bukhari he been there done that came back and he's telling you stick to Sahih Bukhari and they even mentioned some of them yeah. mentioned like wasted so many years all of this yeah diving into this type Qila of knowledge wa qal, okay. logic and yeah. you know these different concepts to come back to this Kalas to sleep Except Quran and Sunnah you know Easy. the, the basis <laughs> Easy the story Sheikh Fahid mentioned I'll translate it over time um Abu, um, Imam al Haramain al Juwaini, Sahib al Waraqat, he was on this stuff, and at the end of life, he made Tawbah, alhamdulillah. Mm. So that's three of the great Ghazali, uh, al Juwaini, and Abu Hamid. Allah. All three of them made Tawbah. Uh, Abu Hamid al Ghazali, Afwan, yeah. Juwaini, who's the third one? Al Razi, Afwan, yeah. Al Razi as well. So al Juwaini, he was teaching in the Haram, and he was teaching um, that Allah is not above before he was above. some Kalam yeah. Ash'ari. <laughs> and then he said, Al Hamadani, he said, Forget all of this. This يعني, Kalam Felsafa, Kida, Kida. Like, just tell me. Tell me about this necessity that I find in my fitrah. And all of us find it. SubhanAllah. When I have a need, a calamity, something, and I want to call upon Allah, I just have a need to look up. And not look down. Even the kafir. If there's a tsunami happening, how many times? They look up, oh God, help me. No, even, the atheist, the even the atheist, even the atheist, what they yeah. say, if you're up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows. They don't believe in Allah. They say the up there. <laughs> what, did, what did he say? al Juwaini. Yeah. He said, he said, Hayyarani al Hamadani. Hayyarani al Hamadani. He's confused me. He has confused me. What can you say? That's yeah, in the yeah, fitrah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, even, even Fir'aun, some of the scholars they mentioned, even Fir'aun, when he said to, um, to build. For Haman, Hatta Yablur al Asbab. Where is that? Above. So build the steps to reach Steps the level. to go up. Allah Alam, if that's the pyramids or not. But yeah. where was he looking? Look at the Lord of Moses. Up. He was going up to the Lord of Moses. But this shows what? That he knew translate, from translate, Musa. Translate, translate, translate. Yeah. He said, uh, Oh Haman, build me stairs. Mm. So, so, so I can go up to the Lord of Moses. So I can go up and look at Musa's God. Or Musa's Lord. And I believe him to be a liar. Yani, build me this, uh, these stairs. I can go up it and I can go up to the sky and see if this God Musa is talking about is really there. Allah this shows us what? It shows us that number one. It's the aqidah of Musa alayhi <laughs> salam. Aqidah of Musa alayhi <laughs> salam. <laughs> and that shows the aqidah of all of the anbiya. All and the, the rusul. Anbiya. And I think, and Allah knows best, I think this is, and I, I didn't see anything on this, but yeah. Sheikh uh, Uthameen, when he wrote this book, Qua yeah. Al-Mufla, and he's describing through it, you see there's a common theme. He gives the principle, he gives the the delil from the text but then he also gives the, the delil from the intellect yeah yeah because yeah. because and he describes talking about how it's a natural fitra belief no. in these different things it's not something complex yeah. no yeah. you don't have to go and get a phd and no. yeah. you know double magister double masters and things like that yeah. to be able to understand it it's yeah. very no. simple, simple yeah. and the, the scholars like they say if you're gonna if you're gonna think hmm. and you want to use your logic and, and, and contemplate 
contemplate on Allah's creation. Yeah. Mm. Not about the creator. Yeah. Because you can't contemplate on that. Sahih. You can't comprehend that. This is beyond you and you, your, lo- and your logic. Think about Allah's creation and wallahi there's enough in that for you. Wallah, go watch the David Attenborough. That Allah is watch David Attenborough is better for you. Watch what he talks <laughs> about and Allah's creation, whatever. That's enough for you to contemplate See on. See Ruf See Ruf Travel in the earth. Look See at Allah's the creation. Allah I think that's a good place to stop for today. I don't think there's a good place to stop. This topic will love you so important. I want to mention Allah the Abiyat. Yeah, the Abiyat, go ahead. MashaAllah. And the Tahawi as well before we finish. Remind me if I forget. So basically, it's a qasida, it's a little lines of poetry that an, a Bedouin um, wrote as a rad against Jahan bin Safwan. Mm-hmm. He heard Jahan bin Safwan and he was mentioning his aqidah. Jahan bin Safwan, as well known, he, was, he studied from Ja'ad bin Dirham and he was the one that spread the madhab and he was declared a kafir by more than 500 of the scholars mm. at that time in the 3rd, 4th century. He read his aqidah and he was talking about his aqidah, sorry, um, that Allah Azza wa Jal is alimun bila ilm oh. he is all knowledgeable but he doesn't have knowledge was sami'un bila sam' and he's all hearing but he doesn't have hearing he can't hear basirun bila basar he is the all hear all seeing but he does not see qawiyun bila quwwa he is strong without any power sadab arabi said to him and and the bado this is how they were they were just Throw a bar if you like <laughs> some poetry line yeah, quick, yeah, quick <laughs> for people to understand. You have to, it's for yeah. lie, the first time I studied this, yeah. or the scholars they mentioned this. I was thinking to myself, why would someone negate these attributes? You have to think that the, 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 you have to think, you have to know how they got there. Yeah, yeah. It's because when they heard a semi, they heard sama, they thought of how do we hear ears when they heard Allah Ta'ala speaks, mutakalim, like, well, how do we speak? We got a tongue, we got voice box. No. This same aqidah or this same way of thinking that some people now they propagate is what lead people eventually to say these kind of statements. Mm-hmm. They're all hearing, but you can't hear in no. the likes. Just no, to I'm know stopped. how they got there. Yeah, yeah. Now. So the Arabi replied to him straight away and he said, Ala inna jahman kafirun baana kufruhu wa man qala yawman qawla jahmin faqad kafar. I read all of it first. Ala inna jahman kafirun baana kufruhu وَمَنْ قَالَ يَوْمًا قَوْلَ جَهْمٍ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ لَقَدْ جُنَّ جَهْمٌ إِذْ يُسَمِّي إِلَاهَهُ سَمِيعًا بِلَا سَمْعٍ بَصِيرًا بِلَا بَصَرْ عَلِيمًا بِلَا عِلْمٍ رَضِيًّا بِلَا رِضَى لَطِيفًا بِلَا لُطْفٍ خَبِيرًا بِلَا خَبَرْ أَيُرْضِيكَ أَنْ لَوْ قَالَ يَا جَهْمُ قَائِلٌ أَبُوكَ مْرُؤٌ حُرٌ خَطِيرٌ بِلَا خَطَرْ مَلِيحٌ بِلَا مُلْحٍ بَهِيءٌ بِلَا بَهَاء طَوِيلٌ بِلَا طُولٍ يُخَالِفُه القصر حليم بلا حلم ووفي بلا وفاء فبالعقل موصوف وبالجهل مشتهر جواد بلا جود قوي بلا قوى كبير بلا كبر صغير بلا صغر أمدحا تراه أم هجاء وسبة وهزاء كفاك الله يا أحمق البشر فإنك شيطان بعثت لأمة تصيرهم عما قريب إلى سقر أعوذ بالله من ذلك بدوين هي سيد I'll summarize it. He said, indeed, Jaham is a kafir and his kufr has become apparent and clear cut. And whoever says the statement of Jaham, then he indeed has also disbelieved. Laqad junna Jahamun idh yusammi ilahahu. Indeed, he has come, become crazy, majnoon. When he called his ilah, his God, sami'an bila sam'in. Basiran bila basar, we was mentioned earlier. Mm. He's all hearing, but he doesn't hear. He's all seeing, but he doesn't see. He's got, he's all powerful, but he doesn't have power. Mm-hmm. Then he says, "Ayurdika an lo qala ya jahm qailun." Oh jahm, would be, would you be happy and pleased if someone said about your father that he is hurrun khatirun bila khatar, malihun bila mulhin? يعني خطير هنا I don't know what, what it means dangerous without no danger مليح بلا ملحن بهيء بلا بها طويل بلا طول he's tall without any uh, he's tall but not tall he's yeah, tall he's but not tall without any length yeah, not, no length yeah. he's tall but not tall and the opposite of it he is short يعني yeah. opposites حليم بلا حلم he is forbearing but he doesn't have any forbearance or patience وفي he is someone that is um, uh, he, he fulfills his promises but he doesn't fulfill his promise فَبِالْعَقْلِ مَوْصُوفٌ وَبِالْجَهْلِ مُشْتَهَرٌ you, you describe your father to be someone who's got intellect, but then he's actually an ignorant. No. Yani two he doesn't opposites. have intellect. <laughs> جَوَادٌ بِلَا جُودٍ That he is 
someone that is generous but he's not generous generous without generosity without yeah. generosity yeah. Like, he's got the name he's generous yeah, yeah he doesn't have the no generosity exactly, yeah. he's generous the generous without generosity the strong without any strength the big without any bigness the small without any smallness <laughs> like he's big but he's actually small yeah. he's strong but he's yeah. still kind of weak yeah he's big, but he doesn't, he's big but he doesn't have any yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're saying all these praiseworthy things but you're actually have no meaning. implying and the opposite and then, so then he says someone said that about your father mm. would you see that as a praise for your father mm. or would you see it as subh, sub, that someone's insulting and cuss, c- cursing and cussing your father may Allah protect us from you ya ahmaq al-bashar but he calls himself the most intellectual Ahmaq most yeah. 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 for indeed you are a sh- satan that was sent to a people to sayiruhum to lead them to amma qareebin soon to a to the hellfire and uh, billah min we have to point out though this is really important remind yeah. me tahawi as well yeah, yeah. this is really how, really how long important. is it because the time is one really the essence one line. One line. yeah yeah. yeah, two minutes to that then, huh? Okay. Uh, subhanallah. Oh, quick, Allah, quickly, Allah. quickly, 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 quickly. Go, 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 quickly. <laughs> Type. Uh, a really important thing, which is, in this bab, people of different extremes. Mm. Okay? So even though we used as example some individuals who negate some of the, because the sifat are different. You have mm. sifat datiyah. Mm. Okay, so the ash- ash'aris, for example, they will negate some of the sifat, specifically those sifat that are datiyah, as in Allah's hands, Allah's foot. They'll negate these but they will not negate these kind of attributes. It, it all goes okay. back to logic, Akhi. Mm-hmm. They all, they, if it's you say all of these groups, they're all based upon what they think and presume to be most befitting. So that's why, so that's why the Ash'aris, yeah. that's why they... Uh, only attribute seven. They only attribute them seven. Yeah. Why? Because it's the only thing that enters the intellect yeah. that they can think of. Yeah, yeah. Nah. All these groups, they all went into their, their different forms. And yani all of them are guilty upon. of one thing, which is they do ilhad fi asma'illah in a sense that they use their aql in order to decide what to describe Allah with mm. and what not to describe Him with. Exactly. Okay? So someone might come out and be like, oh no, we don't mean Jahab Safwan, we're mm. not at this extreme. He, this is what they will say. They will mm. say, Jahab bin Safwan, he is Mu'attil. He's at one extreme. Mm. But you Salafi Wahhabis are on the other extreme. You mm. are Mumathila, you mm. are Mushabbiha. Mm. What you do is, you make Allah similar to His creation because you say Allah's got a foot or He's got a leg. Mm. But, and, and, but we say to them, La, La. We Ahl Sunnah and their aqeedah is not mushabbiha mm. and it's not mumathila and it's not mujassima whatever you want to call it. Mm. Rather, this is the middle path. Mm. You're on one extreme, Jaha might be at another extreme, mm-hmm. and then you really have mushabbiha. You have people that say that extreme, yeah, that extreme yeah. that say Allah Karamiya is like and other than yeah. yeah. Allah's yeah. hands, hands like our hands. Yeah. So Ahl Sunnah are the ones in the middle path, and do not think just because you find a sha'ira doing rudud and there are a sha'ira. Mm. They make proper rad of Jahan Safwan and these mm. sort of attributes. Mm. That doesn't mean now they're in the middle path. Mm. They're still upon misguidance because the middle path is what we've mentioned, the four mm. principles. Exactly. Okay, I'll finish up with this line. Yeah, uh, Imam Al-Tahawi, who is Hanafi, and I want to point out because a lot of the people that follow the Hanafi madhab today, mm. they don't follow Abu Hanifa and the madhab of Abu Hanifa in this bab. They no. follow Maturidiyah and mm. Al-Ashaira. Yes. Yeah, and that is sad. Correct. Go back to this book, Aqita al in the first page. Tahawi. الطحاوية he says هذا ذكر بيان اعتقاد أهل السنة والجماعة على مذهب فقهاء الملة أبي حنيفة النعمان الثابت ابن ثابت الكوفي and then he mentions he continues some more up until he says نقول في توحيد الله we say in the توحيد of Allah so he mentioned the word توحيد of Allah معتقدين بتوفيق الله that we believe by the توفيق of Allah عز وجل that Allah عز وجل is واحد لا شريك له إلى آخر and then he begins start talking about the attributes of Allah JazakAllah khair wa barakallah fiqh. Another book that's connected to that, actually one of my teachers in the Jamia, Sheikh Muhammad Al Khumais, Hafidullah, he has a book connecting um, the different a'imma. So, like you said, Imam Beautiful. Abu Hanifa, Imam Madik, uh, uh, Shafi'i, and Imam Jameen. Ahmed, connecting their aqidah, showing that it was all one, one straight aqidah. path. Yeah, yeah. Jameen. So, that's a beautiful book that people Jameen. can um, get. Yeah. I think it's even been translated. Yeah. Allah Allah. With that, we'll stop. What, 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 what would you advise with a good book for in English language for maybe attributes, the names? and uh, Al-Qaeda yeah. Wasatiya. Yeah. It's been translated. It's been translated. A lot of explanations. Sheikh Wathamin is nice. It's very nice. Is it translated? Expl- it's yeah, translated. it's been translated. I'll start, with that. I'll start with that first. Ah, beautiful. And then go to Wasatiya because it gives you a little ziyadah. You mean Qa'ad al Muthal has translated? Yeah, Qa'ad al Muthal has been translated. Multiple people have been translated. And. 
I think even some shuruhat has been translated, if I'm not mistaken. Mashallah. Yeah, so that's the books I would advise with. One last thing, sorry. Hey, One last thing. Yes? <laughs> and it goes back to the thing that we always say. Yeah. Wallahi, any person who has done hmm. one, two, three tiny books on Aqidah, no. yes? You would know the people of misguidance, those YouTubers, those so-called influencers that feign knowledge. Mm. You would know their misguidance if you just take a few books on Aqidah. Sahih. Wallahi. Sahih. And it's Educate also yourself. and it's also it shows us the very importance of studying this minhaj, studying Aqidah. Where some yeah. people might say you can learn Aqidah in ten yeah. minutes, you can like, learn this in like five minutes. Like the individual who was uh, praising Diabandis recently. Yeah, yeah Diabandis are upon misguidance mm. in this bab mm. and other Abu as well, Sahih. Sahih. specifically this bab as well. So. Sahih. We don't need to go into a dear band, dear blah, blah, and all the different sects and what have you. If you've just had this the asal, basis, the asal, save yourself you the time. Know. <laughs> yeah, save yourself the time. Save just learn the, the time. truth. Learn, learn the Quran truth. Learn the truth. Barakallah, fiqh, ikhwa. And it's, uh, again, it was a pleasure to have uh, a guest on this week. It's our first guest. Alhamdulillah, there was some... Uh, some bumps in the road but alhamdulillah oh, we got yeah. through it alhamdulillah yeah, <laughs> setting up, man. and uh, you know we're learning as we go may Allah Ta'ala make it easy for us all may Allah grant us tawfiq in we might have lost after. a bit of the proper audio but yeah, yeah, please probably excuse lost. us for that we're all yeah. learning and we're yeah. trying new things this week alhamdulillah barakallah fiqh wallahu ta'ala alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakallah